Welcome to Softcore History. Hello, and welcome back to Softcore History. My name is Jake Goldman. I'm sitting in a different room because Dan made us migrate into a different room than we normally record. I didn't so, feel like setting up, Jake. Okay, so we took over the Giggle Boy room. I don't know what the, uh, what is a Giggle Boy. We were here first. Yeah, we were here first. No offense, Eli. It's just Mike. another podcast on our network. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was like a couple Austin standups. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, uh, those voices are Dan Regester and Rob Fox. Uh, Dan. I'll go to you first. I hear you won a little money this weekend. We did okay. We? You know, we're a team. It's a team effort. Who's we? Uh, really just. he's He was putting on for his city at the blackjack tables. Yeah, my left and my right hands. Yeah. Nice. Mm-hmm. You won in blackjack? Yeah, I, I won uh, 2700 bucks in blackjack. What was the hand limit? Um, well, I was only paying the or It was $25 minimum, $2,000 max. Of course, right, because that's a same range right but the, the most i put on one hand was after i doubled down like multiple times 500 bucks nice so yeah. how'd you do on that it's a good little run how'd you yeah how'd you do on the 500 dollars one? i won that hand yeah i imagine yeah. that's <laughs> what happened yeah well i'd be even more incredible if you're like yeah i lost that one but then i was on the heater for 25 dollar <laughs> bets yeah just lost 500 bucks out the gate i was yeah. just nickeling and diamond the fucking casino i uh i went on a cruise my junior year of high school mm-hmm. and they let kids gamble on it yeah on the I open mean, waters yeah yeah, yeah. And which was legal. awesome they had two dollar blackjack i made like 600 bucks at a two dollar black me and jared table. made a lot of money on the uh tfm cruise How yeah much you guys one? were all over that blackjack yeah table. what was it like was it like two two to five dollar hands no like that? no we're playing like ten to twenty dollars no hands. you're playing yeah. normal hands i just i'd never seen a two dollar blackjack table before i was like the Goldman and me was listen. just like, this is my game. Me and, me <laughs> yeah. and Jared were like, we could go listen to Tyga play, or we could just I go to the blackjack. Yeah, I would have well, easily played blackjack. The better option. Yeah. I just like that they're like a cru- like half of the appeal of a cruise. I didn't really realize it until we got on that cruise. Was this just like everything's legal here? Yeah. Like after a certain point, where it's and I just wonder like if someday some country is going to like have cruises embark for them where it's like, do you want to execute a prisoner? Like, don't feel bad. He's a, a serial rapist. He's down in the galley. Yeah. Yeah. So like, or the, the brig. Yeah, yeah. Whatever you call it. Yeah. Yeah. North Korea is just going to break off and just float and be its own thing. Just North Korea cruise line. Yeah. Once we well, know yeah. that's it. Yeah. It'd be a North Korean cruise line that you get on and you get to execute their prisoners. I feel like you would get executed as well on a North Korean boat. It'd be, it wouldn't take a lot, like yeah. five drinks in. You're just like, all right, do it. Kim Jong Un is is, a bi- is a bi- he looks stupid. Or I tear down a poster. Yeah, <laughs> tear down a poster. Get your head cut off. Yeah, he didn't get his head cut off. He was no. chemically poisoned. Never forget. Yeah, uh, he was kind of just beaten to death. Yeah, and then they were like, "He's alive." Yeah. Then they sent a potato back. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Oh, also, Rob had a baby shower this weekend. Uh, did you? Uh, must have missed that. Yeah. <laughs> if a baby shower <laughs> happens uh. in the woods. <laughs> Yeah, no one from work. I invited people from work. No one from work came. But I was there. We all went to the Connor fight. Yeah, they they were in Las Vegas. Oh yeah, you were at the Connor fight. So mm-hmm. you got to see his leg snap. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Yeah. I, I Big had, idiot. Um, the only regret I have is I only had two hundred bucks on Dustin. Yeah, shit. Threw but the house on that I, shit. And that was after I hit. I already made the money. Oh, you just threw two hundred down. But I threw it in the the safe. I was being. I was right. Being a little. That is very responsible for you. I know. Well, actually, I have to go back to the blackjack real quick. When did you decide to stop? What um, made you stop? I was really just high the entire time. <laughs> so I felt like I was in the zone. But once that started to fade and I started to sober up, I was like, it's time to go. Did you go to Planet 13? Yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah. It's like an Apple store, right? <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. Like, it's, uh, it's like the classiest dispensary you'll ever go to. Right. So I had a nice little balance of yeah. weed and then I was getting coffees. Like I wasn't drinking. Yeah. I was only drinking coffee. So like you're just like doing a hippie speedball of weed and coffee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the girl just kept coming back. She's like, "Drinks? Anybody want drinks?" I'm just like, "I'll, I'll have a cup of coffee, please." Interesting. Yeah. Well, I wasn't surprised you weren't at Rob's thing. I thought it was more because of the spite you have for his child that is on. Yeah, board. right. No, I am. St- that's still very much on the table. He wouldn't have come anyway, regardless. Yeah. I mean, I told Kylie the wrong day. That's why she didn't go. Yeah. Is that why she wasn't there? Yeah, I was like, it's <laughs> Sunday. Yeah, because my wife was like. Oh, isn't Dan's girlfriend always going to be there? I was like, I told her the wrong day I'm on purpose. Yeah. yeah. But speaking of blood sp- feuds between hi- my baby and yeah, his. Yeah. Thanks for jumping the gun. A little transition there. Yeah. yeah. I was going to do it, but Rob did it. Yeah. Today we're talking about blood feuds, guys. 
blood feuds. Let's go. Yeah, so the doctrine right. of manifest destiny. I'm excited for this fucking topic. Yeah, no, it's a good one. Blood feuds are tight. There's a lot of them, too. So I kind of narrowed down some of the choice nugs, as okay. you would say, at Planet 13. Um, but basically, kind of from reading all this, it seems like the doctrine of manifest destiny and the Civil War had a lot of impacts on people that are pretty well discussed and documented in history classes like across America, but you never see like the micro level stuff that these things caused. Um, they created problems like with property claims, bitterness with post civil war defeat between different sides. Um, lines weren't only blurry, but they were misunderstanding and often let like the misunderstandings that they caused led to violent conflict pretty often. Um, what was even weirder is when you have big ass families of people settling in different places. It's not only eye for an eye. It's like five eyes for an eye. Yeah. So, uh, what's the, what's the untouchables thing? They send one of yours to the hospital or they send one of ours to the hospital. We send one of theirs to the morgue type of thing. Oh, the Sean Connery. Yeah. Uh, was it Matthew Broderick? Yeah. No, no. What? Matthew Broderick? No, I'm no, no, no. Kevin Costner. Kevin was he in the untouchables. Kevin Costner? I haven't seen The Untouchables. He was in tour. Waterworld. But also, That's the one. Also yeah. The Untouchables. Is that the one where they're at like the mafia dinner and they bring out like Komodo Dragon on a plate or some shit like that? No, that's that? Casino Royale. No. Am I mixing Certainly up? Certainly not The Untouchables. There's there's a fucking movie where there's like a mob boys dinner gala or something like that. And they just start bringing out like endangered species on platters. That's fucking tight. <laughs> I was like, I wouldn't be mad to That's be a, at that. I would be very upset to be at that dinner. Not because I cared about the animals, but because... That bill? That, that's the end of the night? <laughs> well, it's a clear message from the Don. Like, if he's being, like, all serving endangered animals to all his friends, yeah. that means he's like, I'll kill anything. Yeah. yeah. Anything. I mean, I'll eat anything, really. Yeah, the next Especially if out. it's endangered. That actually incentivizes me to eat it. Is it, if you tell me it's endangered? Well, it's already dead. You might as well eat it. Yeah. It's going to go to waste if you don't. Yeah, that's a wasted, endangered animal. That's, I'll eat the shit out of a Komodo You got to think like the last course is just a capo that turned. Although, aren't Komodo <laughs> dragons <laughs> poisonous? Very. Well, if they bite you. I don't know if Does like, that transfer into the I can't meat? imagine there's like a lot of people, though, that are trained in de-venoming uh, well, a Komodo I mean, dragon for f- food purposes. Ra- rattlesnakes are poisonous. People eat rattlesnakes. I don't know if it's one to one. Aren't not. there like uh, I don't know <laughs> certain blowfish that are super yes. poisonous that you can to consume? So God, you have what to is like cut. Called? It's called like mugu, or there's a name for there's it. There's a Simpsons yeah. episode about it. Yeah, yeah. Homer passes out and starts drooling, and they think he dies. But yeah, there is. Um, it's a delicacy if you eat it, and it's prepared. What right, is the endangered animal you would most want to eat? Uh, it doesn't have to be today. It doesn't have to be tomorrow. But at a certain point in your life. A fully restrained silverback gorilla as it's alive, and I stare at it. That's too close to human. I'm just kidding. I would never do oh, that. See, my answer was going to be man. <laughs> the most dangerous the most game. Dangerous game yeah. Well, the most endangered game. Global warming? Yeah, I don't think... Uh, I'm just what animal species has mind? 8 billion of it, and you call it endangered? Uh, I guess if there was 8 billion ants, they'd probably be endangered. I they would be eat. very <laughs> endangered. That would be the worst thing. I want to eat a Florida panther. Florida Panther, huh? There's only like 15 of them left. Really? Give me, give me one of them. Yeah, that's a. What about? Here's what. I, here's my endangered, and I'll tie it back into our podcast. Here, I'll go back in time and eat Anastasia, the last daughter of Tsar Nicholas II. If you believe she really, she might have changed identities. No one's sure. Well, I'll just eat her. There's only even if it, you know, even when they're all still. When alive. you say eat her, yeah. What do you mean? Phrasing. I mean cooker. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not gross. <laughs> yeah, you're not yeah, gross. but I'm, I'm gonna sl- guys. I'm not a fucking monster. I'm gonna slit her throat, right, and chop her up and eat her. I'm, I'm just gonna, making sure not, you're... she's a child. I'm not gonna <laughs> eat her pussy. <laughs> gross. Yeah. Right. Oh my god. Uh, well, what is wrong with you guys? <laughs> I <know>. No. <laughs> yeah, I think endangered animal for me would probably be bald eagle. Hmm. Yeah. Right. They, they're not endangered anymore. Oh well, we saved them. Yeah, we saved them. Well, I would try to. I would want the one that took it back down yeah. into endangered. Actually, mess. you know, what would be a. Fun we need to hunt those motherfuckers <laughs> back into being endangered, just yeah. so our symbol of freedom means something. That's Agreed. True. Uh, you know, what would be a fun endangered animal to eat is just going way back in time to anything that was still alive, 
in the Americas when humans first got here. Like a dodo before bird? we hunted the shit out of them. <laughs> yeah, like dodo gi- birds. giant <laughs> sloths and the mammoths that were. Oh, you're talking than... about like the armadillos that are the size of like yeah, and stuff. Yeah, bro, yeah. the ones like that when humans first got here, they should they should have left. Like reading about those animals, I was like, were I would have turned back sloth- around. Wait, were giant sloths around at the same time as humans? In North America, yeah, we actually rode them. There, it was kind of like public transit. No, I believe there was over there was overlap. Are you sure? On yep, I don't I'm know positive. about that. I'm positive. We'll overlap check on that, that later. and the American lion and stuff like that. Yeah, there's an American lion. Yes. Hmm. Well, I don't know about believe all that. Believe it or not, a bunch of monkeys who could use uh, tools really fucked up a lot of other animals' uh, lives. Actually, small monkey story. Before we ever get into our topic, yeah, uh, I'm from Ocala, Florida. We filmed Tarzan there back in the day. and uh, With Brendan Fraser? No, further back. Or no, he was George of the Jungle. 50s and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, like this is like 50s, 60s. Yeah. And we had a amusement park called Silver Springs. It's just like they have glass bottom boats and shit. So when they were filming it, they just released all these monkeys for scene purposes, like mm-hmm. to have monkeys in and the scenes. And they got out in the wild, didn't uh, they? They just live in Silver Springs now. I believe they have yeah. a lot. They have herpes as well. They have herpes or... It might be chlamydia. It's one of them. That's why Florida yeah. has a python problem. That also a is... A lot of people got them as pets, and they're like, uh, as soon as they grow out... They like, throw them in the glades. Yeah, they throw them in the Everglades after they outgrow their cages. But in, like, the part of Ocala where they are, or the part of, like, where I'm from, people, like, canoe and shit around there, and they get their faces clawed off. By the monkeys? <laughs> yeah, dude, they're not nice. They're really mean. No monkey yeah. is ever nice. They have open sores on their groins, <laughs> and they're just in the wrong place. I mean, place. you think they just, like, teabag them after they scrape their face open? I Hollywood has been <laughs> trying to tell us this for years. Planet of the Apes. They're going to take over. Eventually. But until then, we're going to talk about blood feuds. So the first blood feud we're going to get into is called the Pleasant Valley War, and it's between two families, the Grams and the Tewksburys. Before their feud started in the 1880s, the Grams and the Tewksburys were both livestock ranchers in Pleasant Valley, Arizona. And they were actually really good friends and business partners before it all started. Pleasant Valley, I don't know, Paradise Valley is a like super nice part of Phoenix. Oh, really? Yeah. Pleasant I've Valley sounds like it's a nice place, too, to be honest. It sounds pretty pleasant, though, yeah. uh, Rob. But uh, the business they were both partnered in was stealing cattle from another rancher. Nice. That was their joint. Yeah. The venture, joint venture yeah. Yeah, so uh, they were stealing cattle from a rancher named James Stinson. Their falling out started around 1882, at least this kind of the starting of some tensions building, uh, probably over stolen cattle, but there was actually a really big problem with overgrazing of the land by the Tewksbury sheep. Uh, that was a point of contention as well. At the time, the feud resulted normally just in a couple fistfights or like name-calling, not much. But in 1884, the friendship between the Tewksbury's and the Grams was shattered, when James Stinson made a deal with the Grams to pay them $50 a head of cattle and see that they never served jail time if they would turn state's evidence against the Tewksbury's. So, essentially, this is like criminals rolling over on each other. Yes. This is where it gets started. Um, And, of course, this is in Arizona in the late 1800s. The law is not quite there yet. Uh, Well, what the OK Corral was, what, like the 1880s? Yeah, it's around the same time. No, that's actually when Golden Corral was created. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No. Uh, unlimited rolls. Yes. This was the big problem in Arizona. Yes. Too many rolls, not enough people to eat them. And so, yeah. Broken soft serve machines. Right. And that just gets everybody angry. <laughs> and then you get like a soggy prime rib that doesn't have any color on the outside. It's overcooked. Yeah. It's somehow brown in the middle and pink on the out. There's no juice coming that. out of it. It's weird. Yeah. But I don't care. I love buffets. Dude, I. I kind of fuck me, with buffets. Take bro. me to a Shoney's right fucking now, and we, I will shovel. Take me to Sunny's. I don't care. Mm. <laughs> mm. Sunny's doesn't have a buffet, and I can't imagine how bad that. Would All be. you can eat chicken. They're saving Luby's, which is not so much a buffet as it is. Cafeteria That's a cafeteria. Style. Like, let's not call Piccadilly and Luby's a buffet. You got to pay for the shit you put on your plate. That's fair. Yeah, I was yeah. always game for like a Chinese buffet. Or oh oh yeah. yeah, dude, Chinese buffet slaps, man. Yeah. We would always do that every year with we, the fraternity. There was a Chinese buffet, yeah, in Columbia that we went to all the time. And, like, one of my, like, top ten favorite things that they had was just shitty, like, grade school cafeteria pizza. At the Chinese buffet. Yeah, and I would always get one of those motherfuckers. For sure, like the, the square ones. It's just, yeah. like, quick crust yeah. and, like... It'd just be yeah. me eating, like, nothing actually Chinese. Like, crab <laughs> rangoons dude. and cafeteria <laughs> pizza. Like, yeah, like, just pretty much chicken wings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, It's literally. just, like, it's, yeah, it's orange chicken, chicken wings, uh, crunchy cream cheese, and 
pizza. That's good. Ours was pretty authentic. We actually had one of the stations always just had fish heads. Like if you wanted okay. fish heads. And nice. so if someone was high enough, we'd be like, yo, eat a fish head. Plus. Ichiban was the go-to spot at UCF. It was all you can eat, hibachi and sushi we for like 12 had, bucks at lunch. Ichiban, well. like a uh, Mongolian grill type yeah, of thing. Yeah, it was the fucking best. And then uh, Dante Culpepper ruined it by buying the land and creating a bar for six months called Culpepper's, which was not very good. Yeah, he made a lot of stuff in the Central Florida area that did not take off. No, no, no. Culpepper uh, failed many times. It's a it's, uh, story infinitely better than Vince Young's. So <laughs> yes. That is true. Uh, so anyway, there is still a Vince Young Steakhouse. He's no in no way involved. <laughs> so anyway, the Grams agreed to do state's evidence. Uh, the Grams took the deal and started working for Stinson, betraying the Tewksburys by siding with their accusers. Tewksbury, by the way, great old old time name. Very good. I actually just looked this up while you were talking. There was a pitcher from uh, when I was a kid named Bob Tewksbury, and I was like, that, there can't be that many people named that, but I couldn't find anything that he was related. How to. was it spelled? T e w. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I'm, uh, things got more violent as the years went on, and in February 1887, when Thomas Graham shot a Tewksbury hired hand who had been herding sheep on contested grazing land, uh, retaliation started to happen. In retaliation, Graham was shot by Ed Tewksbury, who immediately went on the lam. Shortly after, the Grahams and their sympathizers laid siege to the Tewksbury cabin, engaging in a shootout that lasted for hours. The only ceasefire during the shootout was granted to Mrs. Tewksbury, so she could dig shallow graves for her son, John, and his friend, William Jacobs, who had been killed in the melee. Ah, a grave break. Yeah, that's fucking nuts to me. Like, when I read that, I was like, how did... There, wait! Wait! Yeah. The old lady needs to bury her dead boy! Also, <laughs> they're sending her out to do it? <laughs> yeah, right? Like, if you're taking a fucking no, break... No, they sent her out because if it was anyone else, they would have just killed him, too. Right, which yeah. is fair. I mean, These yeah. are criminals. For sure. I, well, I'm sure she wasn't, but, like... Yeah, it went on for hours. Others behind a rock, just that's, taking their turns. That's how sieges go. No, they're in yeah. their cabin. They're in a cabin. Someone was in a log cabin. The other well, someone's were behind, behind a giant rock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah they're so they're all behind rocks. a stagecoach or some shit. I'm guessing. Um, this uh, feud actually had a pretty big body count, though. So over the next few years, between twenty and fifty men from both sides were killed. What uh, a what? Think about think about that for a second. Like my grandfather's fought in World War Two. And let's say one of them died. They did neither died, but let's say one of them died in World War Two. Would have been a better world. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, Dan. Why? Because my son wouldn't be born. Yeah. <laughs> Way to Dan's connect the really dots, Rob. Yeah. <laughs> but like, and then like, let's say like, um, let's say somehow like my my one of my parents are already born, so I could still exist. But the grandpa's gonna, remember, and then you die over like some other motherfucker's cow. <laughs> so like uh, like you're like so someone like your dad or grandpa dies in the U.S. Civil War and you're like I come from a family of fighters and like this guy was fighting to to free the slaves and then you die because you're like in a cow stealing argument that <laughs> yeah. for, that someone else is making most of the money on yeah yeah it's I, rough times I would I think I would have left yeah. it's like maybe I leave Arizona yeah yeah um yeah also living in Arizona then. Oh, yeah, there's not air you, Dan, how was how hot was it in Vegas? You, that you were just where I mean, where, I was also just in Phoenix. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. goddamn, you were it was, both. It's 120 degrees. Yeah. Oh, it wasn't that hot back then. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. It's just yeah, just kidding. It was always that hot in the desert. Turns yeah. out, but um, and and shorts had been air conditioned. Yeah, the shorts. You were getting shot immediately if you were in shorts in the Wild West. And you're wearing multiple layers back then. Yeah, to protect you from the shitty bullets. The little round balls they shot at each other. I'm sure they had real bullets at the time. I don't know gun history. Uh, they were probably they were actually using non muskets by then. Yeah, yeah, they yeah were using yeah. like this casing bullet. For situation. sure. Uh, I know a lot about guns. I know you do. Uh, anyway, so uh, 20 to 50 men from both sides were killed, often by the hands of masked men. So a lot of masked raids and killings as well uh, made it really hard to make arrests. However, the feud finally came to an end in 18. How many people could it have been? <laughs> That's a, what I was wondering. It's not that big of a place. Uh, not, not that many people live in Arizona. Even less people are involved with the Tewksbury's and what's the Grams or whatever. Yeah, but what? you got to think. You can't, you can't arrest them. You can't arrest them all and be like, well, chill out. Yeah, but every like Western town just has one sheriff. Yeah, yeah. that's really the problem. 
the law not being there yeah. is the problem. Nowadays, you could easily arrest all 50 of them or however many there Yeah, were. you could yeah, recode well, that shit, do whatever. Most I don't of the know. people that took care of this were just fucking bounty hunters that come from other states. Yeah, and you know what and happens? And Pinkertons, a, that type of thing. Yeah, you get like a little, uh, you know, scratch drawing. Pinkertons, huh? Pinkertons, whatever you, you say. Yeah, yeah that co- is that coming up? It's not. That's actually what I was thinking about doing for my next episode. The Pinkertons? The Pinkertons. Yeah, but which I, I think I crushed Jake's dreams when he's like, you hear about the Pinkertons? But like, yeah, I played Red Dead Redemption. Yeah, yeah. then I was like, I don't want to talk about the Pinkertons anymore. <laughs> was it? We were talking about, a, were we talking about this podcast where it's like, yeah, like video games or whatever. They're not a bad way to Dude, start. Red Dead history. Redemption 2 is maybe the greatest story like in media. I, I still haven't played it's it so yet. good. I, I really want to play it. Like, start to finish, it's just they so good. They did make a good. South Park episode entirely about it. <laughs> it's so good. So, this is how the feud ended. It ended in 1892 when Tom Graham Jr., the last surviving member of his family, was shot and killed in Tempe by the fugitive Ed Tewksbury, the last of his clan. Tewksbury was tried and convicted, but due to a legal technicality, his case was dismissed in 1895. Tukes, the only was it like a Cosby technicality? Like wh- how? What's the technicality? I don't you fucking rem- murdered I, him. I didn't see what the technicality was, but or he like was also OG- a fugitive. Yeah, but I I, I, didn't, I didn't look for the technicality because I just thought it was funny that there's no the back then. It's not like a it's not like a Cosby. He probably killed all the jury. Like yeah, that's like the really. Like there's yeah. no and Bill Cosby got out on like a real actual technicality. The, one of the worst technicalities. Oh yeah, I've ever seen. By oh the yeah, way. <laughs> like whoops. Yeah, dude, you gotta like. That DA or whatever that was just like d- decided to disregard that deal and use that evidence should be crucified. Like, yes, that's it's like it's in like a he, public it's, square. It's yeah. kind of like like this man should have been. Yes. It's not this like man. it's not like the OJ trial where the prosecution was just kind of inept and then also like at, for whatever reason like half the jury wanted OJ to get off and like the defense team was incredible. I mean, that's a murderer's row of defense lawyers. <laughs> <Yeah. OJ. laughs> for, 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 no pun intended, it but it this was. Is, this is too yeah. modern of a reference. I, let's move on. I don't care about Bill Cosby uh, or OJ anymore. OJ is actually uh, within the r- range of history. It's p- more than 20 years. So you can oh, but I tried to do that one. You said no. Anyway. I'm not doing OJ. Okay. Anyway, uh, his case was dismissed. Tewksbury died of natural causes in 1904 as the sole survivor. Of the Pleasant Valley War. Literally Incoming everyone died. Jesus. Everyone in each family died. Yes. It wasn't just the two families, though, that were affected by the feud. Trying to take it easy. What are you doing? I guess you didn't hear the Akon. No, Is I'm trying to survivor? do an episode. You're just <laughs> saying things. <laughs> what are you doing? Are you not familiar with the song? I'm familiar with Akon. Yeah. For yes, I'm a rider. <laughs> I'm just a soul survivor. survivor. Okay, yeah. Okay, I get it. Uh, it wasn't just the two families that were affected. For many years before the war started, Arizona had been vying for statehood. But since the feud remained unresolved for so long, many legislators in Washington saw it as proof that Arizona was not civilized enough to be part of the Union. Some historians believe this Pleasant Valley War set back Arizona statehood by decades. Yeah, Arizona was, it's, what, like the 49th state? It was the last contiguous state. Yeah. And also, it's maybe still not civilized enough if we're being no, fucking no, honest. No, if we're being completely real. I mean, they're still counting votes out there. They're still That's ca- insane. <laughs> still counting votes out there. I went to uh, the Omni for our baby moon in, in uh, Tucson. We were just like, it's a, it's Omni. It'll be nice and everything. And I swear to God that cr- the crowd at that pool, it was like, it was like, are you people staying here? <laughs> Did you just show up? Wait, it what do you mean? It was like a fucking biker rally in the eh. pool <laughs> it's like gorilla like, juice heads yeah um yeah like, like are they wearing their leather in the pool what's going on yeah yeah it's just like fucking full i full like body tats and just like like just blonde I, at one point i turned to my wife and i was like you're five months pregnant and are have a top five body here damn female oh really Oh, well, you're in. Eh, well, Tucson shouldn't really have any uh, excuses. University of Arizona is a pretty hot school. Yeah, this was townies. This was townies. Mm. Nothing like townies, baby. And it was crazy too because it wasn't like, oh, well, you were just accidentally in some trashy place. Tucson National Golf Course is what this Omni was on. Like, it's which the way they play PGA tournaments all the fucking time. Was it like Dollar Miller Light Day or Did something? They, it looked that was what <laughs> yeah. the crowd looked like. Yeah. 
it's just like dollar fifty cent loan stars. Yeah, they're all involved in Verve Energy at some point. Like I don't <laughs> everyone know everyone in Arizona. Y- well, yeah, because <laughs> like w- depending on which part of the pyramid scheme you you're in, it sounds like the people you were with probably on the lower end. Of yes. the pyramid scheme. Yes, bottom of the pyramid for the pyramid <laughs> scheme. <laughs> the people that are holding up the and peak. Yeah. The other thing too is like, I don't even understand how they were having a. G- they they had to just be so fucked up on everything because it was so fucking hot, and it was midday, so there wasn't a lot of shade on the pool, and there were like a hundred of them in it. Okay, which means what the pool des- was a hot bath. What you're describing though is people who probably bought a timeshare. Uh, at that Omni, yeah, uh, yeah. These are so these people don't double own, pyramids. Yeah, scheme. they don't own yeah. condos. They're not there on vacation. They they own that vacation for a week a year. Yeah, they worked hard for that timeshare. Well, speaking my parents of, made it was mistake pretty well. great. Like, like I turned above time I, shares, I turned way. to Courtney at one point and was like, "Yeah, Saturday was a good day to not do the pool because we were like Thursday and Friday. We we're like, let's do something else Saturday, and that turned out to be a great fucking decision. Why was there a shooting? It looked pretty stabby." <laughs> The pool was red. It was real <laughs> weird. Um, well, speaking of just trashy people near water, this one's for you, Rob. The next feud we're going to talk about is the Turks and Joneses, also known as the Slicker War of the Ozarks. Yeah. Yeah, that's right, Rob. The feud between the Turks Wait, and the Wait, is this Missouri Ozark or Arkansas Ozark? Oh, it's Benton County. Well, everyone ha- hates the Turks. We know this. Yes. Benton? We've gone over the history of the people. So Arkansas? No, it's Missouri. Missouri. Yeah. Oh, uh, there's a Benton, I think, Arkansas. Maybe it splits it. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. I didn't look up the geography. No. I don't do and that. why would you? Yeah, it's dumb. They this told me Missouri. Soft core history, and it's Missouri, and you're not from there, and you shouldn't give a shit about it if you're not from there. Yeah. So uh, the Turks and the Joneses, both of Benton County, Missouri, and the Ozark Mountain region, started. I, I, I want you to know, guys, if you don't just picture Appalachia. But this is this is just another version of Appalachia. Yeah, I. That's pretty apt. I would imagine from every pop culture portrayal of what the Ozark from Ozark. Yeah, just yeah. Well, I'll tell you Jason what, man. Bateman. As a Missourian watching Ozark, that chick who plays Ruth, Julia Garner, nails it. Christine nails it. Yeah, yeah. I want to. I want to get her to do a cameo, but she's not on cameo. I want to get her to do a cameo in character as Ruth, doing a hype up video for Mizzou football, and just play it on the during the. Yes. Get him, Marty. Yeah. Get him. I can't do Marty. I can't yeah. do her voice. I just, can do accents. Just her like, yeah. I don't know fuck about shit, but I know y'all better win this game. <laughs> well, this feud started like a lot of feuds throughout the years on election day. Uh, most men at that time were given the day off from work so that they could visit the polls, which meant they could also spend a lot of time in the local saloon after casting their votes. So this is a, uh, I think I talked about this in our Capitol riot. Mm-hmm. episode or our uh british sa- uh, uh sacking washington dc episode yeah um this was a common thing across the country and it was a common thing in st louis what years were these taking place um, for the ozark one uh this would be 1840s okay so yes pre-civil war yeah it's pre and i think a little bit post-civil war in st louis had a similar problem where uh people would either have off work or just not be working. I don't know what their fucking jobs were back Sounds then. like nobody wants to go to work, yeah. Rob. I mean, at this they, point, I think, like, sweeping dust was a job. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But they would go, they would get shit-faced, like, after voting, or maybe before voting, or both. All the time. And in St. Louis, like, this was, because I was just talking about, it's like, there's a difference between riots in a city for political reasons and storming the Capitol. And the reason is, is because political riots in random cities across the country are like it's a weird year if it doesn't happen. Yeah, a- and a lot of it's backloaded, and the reason it's backloaded is because shit like this happened, where like in St. Louis, German and Irish immigrants would go vote, and there's different they'd be voting for different things, and they'd all get drunk at their own saloons, you know, O'Malley's mm-hmm. and fucking Hitlerys. <laughs> oh Hitlers, yeah, oh Hitlers, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and old Adolf's so Hitler yeah. Tavern, yeah. and uh, and then they would get they'd be like, you know what? Man, fuck everyone who voted for the other side. They go meet in the street, beat the shit out of each other, turn into a riot, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah, this is like a normal, Ameri- very American situation. And as such, a combination of whiskey and politics inevitably resulted in fistfights, such as the one in 1840 when Andy Jones and Jim Turk got into a scuffle that was soon joined by other members of their families. Uh, later... A bounty hunter came into the region looking for a relative of the Joneses named James Morton. 
The county sheriff wasn't willing to help, but the Turks saw an opportunity to get back at their rivals, so they, they fucking kidnapped Morton and turned him over. Like, they literally turned state's evidence. They were like, here's the evidence. It's him. Here you go. Take him. But uh, because of their actions, Patriarch Hiram Turk was arrested for high... Yeah, yeah. Of all the people to blow that name. Yeah, right. Oh, God, right. I don't know if the Turks were Jewish, though. I don't think they were. They lived in the Ozarks. <laughs> they weren't. But yeah. uh, that, it's actually funny. Hiram's kind of like, biblical, isn't it? Hiram is certainly, like, has... Old I think Testament pretty vibes. good. Yeah. yeah, it's it's funny because like for as anti-Semitic as most Christians were in that time, they loved Old Testament names. Jebediah, Elijah, Ezekiel. Ezekiel yeah. yeah, like Nebuchadnezzar. All of, yeah, like yeah. all of them. But that like they were naming themselves after Jews <laughs> and hated Jews. Well, those were Jews before Jesus. Yeah. So you can't be mad at them. It'd be like if I was naming my children after Kansas Jayhawk players. <laughs> like I was just like Joel. Yeah, name like your child jo- Joel. Joel and like Todd for Todd Reesing. Like I was just, yeah. it really doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, so yeah, Hiram Turk was arrested for the kip- kidnapping. Charges were dropped though, but feeling they'd been wronged, the Jones family got their revenge when Andy Jones allegedly shot and killed Hiram on July seventeenth, eighteen forty-one. Jones went to trial, but he was also acquitted. No one gets in trouble in these feuds, and that's. The absence of law doing its job. Welcome to the 1800s where you could literally just move a town over and be perfectly fine. So now feeling that the justice system had failed them, the Turks publicly well, announced... rightfully feeling yeah, that way. Yes, of course. The Turks publicly announced their intention to form a vigilante group to rid the area of counterfeiters, robbers, and murderers, which, you know, easy to get behind. Anyone's going to... Yeah, fuck counterfeiters. Fuck robbers. First off, fuck murderers. Number one, yeah. top priority, counterfeiters. Murder is third on that list. Yeah. Yeah. Because you know what's worse than being murdered? Having stuff taken from you and still having to be alive for it. You know what this just tells me? Is that this is this is further proof of the class problem in America. Because we look at these people doing this, and we're like, look at these idiot rednecks. I'm going to get up. I'm going to take the law into my own hands because people ain't doing it for me. But if they're a billionaire, we call them Batman. That's right. That's right. And I don't like it. No. See, I, want more, I want more uneducated <laughs> rednecks to take more, into the you streets. You want more uneducated vigilantes? Yes. I doubt that's a good idea because, see, Batman just goes on like boat trips with entire ballerinas yeah about or dance and then scuba groups. dives off the side of the boat and then zip lines flies into beijing do you not buy into the good guy with a gun theory uh jake no okay <laughs> i certainly don't um depends on the situation yeah i'm sure like if it's a one-on-one thing yeah, yeah if it's a thousand people in a walmart and they all have guns a lot of people are dying i i said that to someone who was like uh uh, who is the guy speaking up Batman specifically? The fucking psycho who shot the mo- Aurora movie theater. For, what, we don't need to say his name. Fuck his name. Yeah. But uh, TFM commenters back in the day were like, a guy with a gun could have stopped that. I was like, in a dark, loud theater where there's a ton of other things flashing. Like, yeah, I was like, maybe if it w- there was a Navy SEAL watching the movie. But no, I don't think yeah. Yeah. you with a gun would have done much. I very much trust trained, like, people like you said navy seals or someone in the military to be able to handle a situation like that yeah i do not trust my friend who cosplays in his backyard with an ar-15 to handle the situation the same way it also depends on the last, situation last good guy with a gun news story that came out guess what happened to him he got shot he got by shot by a cop yeah <laughs> what wasn't he also black no no oh. he was a white guy oh oh <laughs> God. That's why you didn't know. Yeah. That's you. why you had to ask. Oh, God. <laughs> All right. I'm going I'm to move on. <laughs> um, so under the guise of public welfare, they rounded up people from the community and went after these unwanted elements of robbers and counterfeiters, which naturally, you know, included the Joneses and all the Joneses' friends. Oh. Weird, right? Interesting. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. It's those. What if they named counterfeiter first? Because that was like their specific thing that they did, right? Yeah, it had to have been. Like it's like if you were like hated me but wanted like justice for all, you're like I'm gonna round up uh, the alcoholics (laughs) and the murderers. (laughs) I'm gonna round up all the like loud, pale, heavy drinkers. Yeah, yeah, and the murderers (laughs) and them too. Yeah. 
So the group uh, that was rounding up all these Joneses was soon nicknamed the Slickers, based upon their usual mode of punishment called slicking, which involved tying a person to a tree and then whipping them with a hickory switch, which in all, that doesn't sound too bad. Yeah, I mean, Adrian mm. Peterson did it to his child, but mm, yikes. It's not what pickup sticks was for me when I was a kid. No. Okay. In retaliation, the Joneses started the anti-slickers movement, ah, of course, yes. who guarded their allies and occasionally went after slickers as well. The battle raged until the slickers mistakenly went after an innocent farmer and nearly killed him, after which the Missouri government charged 38 of the slickers with crimes. Their arrest diminished the slicker numbers significantly and led to a few dissolving over the next few years. It's worth noting that this part of Missouri at this time the Ozarks, like, people don't really give a shit. People are like, oh, the Ozarks, the Lake of the Ozarks. The lake's not there yet. The Lake of the Ozarks was made in it's, the, like, it's it's post-World War II, I think. Yeah, it's man-made lake. It's man-made lake, yeah. I believe it's post-World War II. If it's not, it's right before it. There are so many goddamn lakes that are man-made in the United States because I think in, like, was it 19, early 1900s, they had that, uh, like, law that passed where they, they proactively went out to, like, create yeah. water. Uh, you talking about all the lakes in Austin, for example? Uh, Lake Lanier in uh, Georgia. Yeah. Which, it, 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 would, it would be like old towns that they just told, hey, you got to move. We're going to flood your fucking that's town. That's actually a storyline in Ozark. Ozark. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's, a lot how, of that's why they're... It, and it might have been pre, pre-World pre War II, but it really... It was, it was. It was 20th century, like because, mid-20th century, I think. And a lot of shit goes down on those lakes because there's literal, like, buildings and stuff still underneath on the... like Yeah, on the bottom of the ocean. Or the bottom ocean. of the lake. Bottom of the lake, yeah. yeah. So people kind of get like, kind of t- tied up with like old buildings, or there. I think there was a story in Lake Lanier where a lady jumped off one of those water trampolines mm-hmm. and landed into one of the old house's chimneys, and she got stuck in the chimney Jesus. and drowned. Jesus, that's got to be like top five worst ways. Lake Lanier is like danger lake. Like it's it always trends on Twitter. Like every major every holiday lake. weekend, people yeah. die. I mean every lake. Lake Travis. Lake Travis. People die all the time up there. All the fucking time well, on Lake Travis. that happened with the... I mean, there was a rally out there where a couple of people died, too, I'm pretty sure, but... Oh, where the boats sank? Yeah. No, the boats... Oh, the boats sank. No one died. No one I thought died. that was Austin. Was that Travis? That was Travis. It was Travis, I yeah. thought. Okay. Maybe it was... I, that was no, it was. I thought it was like... Oh, they, swamped, uh, they, they swamped each other. Lake Travis was more, is more Trump country. They got... If you own a boat, there's a decent chance. Yeah. Boat if ownership... You, yeah, you're voting for Trump one way or the other. <laughs> yeah, if if you own a boat and you uh, are voting like uh, for a Biden Democrat, you're living on like Martha's Vineyard. You you own a yacht. Yeah, you're yeah 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 yeah. Or again, or you're a Trump guy. A lot of yacht ownerships either way. I feel like yes. Yeah. But if you're like a <laughs> Biden is kind of like to me the last of the like Kennedy Democrats. Sailboat. You own a yeah, sailboat. A sailboat Honestly, Democrat. We yeah. should do an episode maybe maybe closer to Halloween or something where we just go through like all the terrible tragic accidents throughout like the united state lakes lake deaths lake deaths should we it's just drunk people it's mostly drunk people. all drunk people it's uh, almost entirely drunk yeah yeah, like really like i'm like part of me is like oh man the lead then i'm like oh no they're most people don't know how to drive a boat most people don't know how to swim that well yeah to be quite honest it's true and most people definitely don't know how to drive a boat when they're blackout drunk on the fourth of july yeah that's also illegal people don't know that yeah. You can get a DUI. There are boat, boat police. It's yeah. called, a B- yeah. it's called a BUI. A buoy. Yeah. Yeah. Not great. It's very funny, though. If anything, a, a <laughs> I BUI. I didn't know I couldn't I could do, do this. That. Yeah. A BUI should honestly be a harsher circumstance than a DUI. There's a way higher. Mm, no, I'm not going to get into stats here. Is there anyway. a JUI? For what? Jet skis. That would just be a BUI. Mm, it's no. too surface level. I don't think you can get it if you're being you're not you're not piloting it if you're on jet oh you on the jet I'm sorry I thought you meant on water skis yeah jet ski yeah. yes I think that's just a BUI yeah it's just a BUI it's like a motorcycle is still a DUI it's true and it, you should never get it though you could probably out outrun the bow police you certainly you, can't uh, um they know where you're going yeah why are you, no are you gonna outrun zone? it's how a you body gonna, of water you're gonna lose them <laughs> hey we saw him get off yeah. the boat <laughs> yeah. Off He's the jet ski, you just ride the jet ski onto the shores. And then run where? Anywhere. <laughs> You're going to get caught. They know whose jet ski it is. They also usually have helicopter coverage during that time of year. Mm. But anyway, um, again, repercussions of blood feud. The Slickers form of justice caught on with the people of Missouri. As more Slicker groups sprang up that had nothing to do with the Turk-Jones feud, they just liked hitting people with switches. So 
Yeah, so that's the problem. This is now we're in Dark Knight territory. Yeah, where there's just copying Batman. fake Batmans <laughs> yeah. and hockey pads. Yeah, so much like they're just like man, you know what sounds tight? Hitting people with a piece of wood. Yep. So uh, turns out a lot of innocent people were accused, beaten, and even killed for crimes they didn't commit. Hold but on, you're telling me, <laughs> yeah, that a system of justice that doesn't involve uh, a lot of careful process and uh, due process. A, a, and innocence until proven otherwise doesn't end well for anyone. So, I mean, no, I'm not. I'm not saying that. Oh, so, okay, okay. Yeah, no, yeah, I'm yeah, saying. Yeah. I didn't want to say that either because I'm. I'm pro saying vigilante. unless you're in the blood feud, don't pretend to be in the blood feud. You're gonna kill innocent. Everyone people. wants to be in the blood feud, All right, but they're not ever yeah. in the blood feud. Right. Yeah. No. How many? Actually, I wonder. Is maybe lost to history? Maybe it's a episode we do. How many? Um, fucking Kmart Biggie Tupac things there were back in the day, right? Like, oh. people tried to invent their own blood feuds to be as cool as... Just to as be a part of something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or how, or many, how many sucker fish Biggie and Tupac had who really weren't a part of them, but were like, I'm on that guy's side. Right. Oh, of course. And how many people probably antagonized them, too? Yeah. Um. So, the Joel next... Reyes, were you one of the people? Yeah, I was Tupac. You're a Tupac guy? Yeah. I prefer Tupac's music as well. Yeah. Same. Uh, The... Seven Day Theory or whatever it was. Was that him? That was... uh. Tupac was also from the East Coast. Machiavelli, when he was releasing under that name. So the stolen Va- he's a Stolen Valor West Coast guy. Uh, No. Because he's original. Yeah, he's I originally mean, from But he East produced Coast. all his music in the Yeah, West. and yeah, Napoleon wasn't East from Coast. France. Shit happens. What? Anyway. The next feud we're going to talk about doesn't have a cool name. It's just the Lee Peacock feud. Cool names, though. Lee? The Lee and Peacock feud. Okay. I don't know what this is, but I like to imagine that uh, Robert E. Lee is fighting a peacock. Oh, dude. Or just what's NBC. C- yeah. What's crazy is you're so wrong. Um, in, <laughs> <laughs> in August 1861, Bob Lee joined the Ninth Texas. Doesn't sound like I'm wrong so far. Bob, Bob Lee, not Robert <laughs> E. Lee. <laughs> Very close. Uh, joined the Ninth Texas Cavalry of the Confederate Army, leaving behind his family in Northeast Texas. Okay, so Robert Lee in the Confederate Army. <laughs> Bob E. Lee. It doesn't. I'm not. That's not like I'm You're not wrong. wrongish. You're wrongish. <laughs> Bob, Bob Lee. E, no, Bob E. Lee. No, his name is Bob Lee. Bob E. Bo- he was never once called Bobby. Bob E. Stop it. I'm trying to tell stories. Okay. Tell your story. <laughs> While he was away, leaving his behind, leaving behind his family in Northeast Texas, the Union League, a civil group created to promote loyalty th- to the Union and to protect blacks and the Union sympathizers. Set in, up a, in Texas? Yeah. Set up a local chapter headed by Lewis Peacock. Te- Texas was, by the way, as an aside, uh, a much more divided state on Union versus Confederate than a lot of other states in the South were. I can see that, too, because... Uh, Stephen F. Austin didn't want to secede. He well, advo- well, Didn't he want to just... No, he wanted to stay in the United States. He, oh, okay. he advocated against secession. Austin was like, fuck that. And he was, I think governor at the time and they were like yeah shut up old man like thanks for the independence and, and goodness in america but now it's time to leave and you're fucking old you shut the fuck up well, i feel Rob, like texas wanted to that's what the textbooks that are published here in texas would like to have you believe what 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 was the truth very though? hindsight 2020 they were fully confederate rob i think if anything yeah, a lot right. of them were probably just what like it? texas independence versus like joining a confederacy yeah i don't think they too. cared uh, no, mean, by were, the Civil War, they they were uh, Texas independence wasn't. It was kind of the third option. Oh, okay. They were more concerned about it being confederate, but like they were just in general more split because it was not really. And you could, still this day, like you wouldn't like you're from fucking centralish northish Florida, north like, central Florida. Yes, you know that like Texas is not the same as the rest of the Southeast. No, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, like Kentucky, which never joined the Confederacy has more in common with the Confederate states than Texas, which did join the Confederacy. Yeah, that's true. Like, North Florida is pretty... You can see. Yeah. You can see what was going on up there. But, it's like, Georgia. South Florida... Yeah. Where yeah. I'm from is lower Georgia. Yeah. Yeah. But down south, yeah, it's a completely different state. I mean, it's it's kind of tough because, like, Florida actually was, like, the number one beef provider of the Confederate Army, too. A lot of beef. In Tampa? and. Yeah, I would actually. I think it is Tampa because the Bulls. Yeah, it kind of makes sense because also yeah. like, why would the Union waste 
any time in invading Florida. that state. No. Because whoever wants you, – you, you're insane if you want to get in a tropical war. That's like Vietnam of the Civil War. It's like yeah, come Vietnam down to the with stick. muskets? <laughs> yeah. Pass. Yeah, hard pass. And it's not like it's like uh, air-conditioned Florida. It's the worst part of Florida. Right. There's no wind. There's no breeze. Yeah. It's just hot and muggy. Just yeah. Swamp. At least there's at least the herpes monkeys aren't there yet. Not yet. That's like, 100 years later. Yeah. <laughs> it's a union soldier just <laughs> taking fire. <laughs> some fucking monkey. <laughs> God, it's got red balls. Um, yeah. So anyway, after the war, Lee returns home to find the Union League using their political weight to force the area to adopt what the community saw as unfair reconstructionist initiatives. Uh, many of Lee's neighbors looked to him, a former Confederate, as a leader to push back against the new form of Northern oppression. Reconstruct- reconstruction initiatives is a nice way of saying letting black people go. Yeah. Yeah. It's a nice way of saying black people are people. Yep. Yeah. No, I mean, it's that. And they were like, Bob, help us. <laughs> All these people have been here this whole time saying blacks are people. You got to help Bob. T- let's. Let's help at least help us find a middle ground with these. So yeah, Bob Lee's trying to be the voice of the people that suck. And uh, to quash his new rival, Lewis Peacock rounded up his men and arrested Lee on trumped up charges of war crimes. So this is kind of lending itself back to the this war just ended. Right. Yeah, like people are still very upset. You know what that's a other. great you know what's a great uh, uh, lesson in because this started a blood feud is uh, he probably didn't commit war crimes. <laughs> So if you don't he, think he was riding around making like a union general wave a white flag <laughs> in the streets, <laughs> like just taking pop shots, just popping everybody yeah. off. Yeah. So like, while this guy was an asshole, if you accuse someone of something they didn't do, yeah, people are going to naturally disagree with you, no matter what right side of history you're on. Yeah, yeah. So maybe try to stick to the fucking facts. Maybe don't make shit up for your narrative. Yeah, right? yeah. It's pretty. No matter how. What? No matter if you're on the right side or not. Yeah. Don't Just do it. Don't make shit up. It's a great lesson. Uh, knowing he would be exonerated in court, Lee and his brother, who acted as a chaperone, went peacefully. But instead of taking Lee to the authorities, Peacock's men took the brothers into the wilderness and robbed them. They also forced both Lee brothers to sign a $2,000 promissory note before setting them free. Alive but angry, Lee and his brothers sued the leaders of the Union League and won. But instead of settling the matter... The 1867 judgment only escalated the bitterness between the two sides. When a relative of Peacock's later shot and wounded Lee, the first blood had been spilled. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So they sued them to, what, get their money back? Yeah. Okay, so they got their money back, and then the Peacocks were pissed. Right. And then then they shot the Lee. Yes. Or Bob Lee. Right. They shot Bob Lee. First blood spilled, and this would become a small-scale civil war in Texas. Tight. Yeah. So in the summer of 1868, after a year of ambushes and shootouts that resulted in the death of about 50 men, Peacock requested help from the federal government. Can we can we take like a, a 30,000 foot, foot view of the United States of America for a second? Yeah. Uh, sure. Go for it. There are dozens of family guerrilla wars mm-hmm. going on across the country. Probably right now. Well, I meant then. Yeah. No, I'm talking about this. This oh, time, okay. right post Civil War. Dozens of those alone. Alone right there. Reconstruction of the South, trying to get black people to be able to be people, essentially, yeah. in the South. Um, fighting, like, what, 20, 30 Indian nations in the West at the same time? Yep. I am not quite sure any president certainly since the cold war ended deserves to be mentioned at all on the greatest presence of all time because anyone in this time frame at all even the worst like andrew johnson is president of time and he is dog shit he has to he has to deal with all this all of this <laughs> and this is normal yeah like clinton's just like oh Oh no! I hope the dot com boom doesn't get too big. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, I mean, think about Bush like, is like, oh no, the housing bubble. Like, what? When, when was Wounded Knee? Uh, 1890s. 18... Or late 1880s, early 1890s. I okay, believe. so you just get over like the biggest and worst war in the history of your young nation, and now you're like going through, like you said, guerrilla warfare between families. People are still pissed off 30 years later. Yeah, 
about the Civil War conflict. Hundreds of guerrilla wars yeah. between families. So it's, yeah, it's fucking bananas. And this is just the best thing about America, though. I, One of the things, and I'm going to actually take a step back here, too, and just way big, like some psychology stuff I've been reading lately. Um, families that undergo a large-scale migration event where they migrate from one place to another like overseas have way higher dopamine levels in their bodies they're starting to find out like their bodies have a lot more dopamine i don't know why Um, so they're happier no that's actually a misconception of dopamine the right amount of dopamine is fantastic it's so they're intense they're intense it creates mood disorders a lot of like maniacal behavior manic not maniacal manic behavior um it leads to like a lot more depression a lot more intense behavioral issues um that's what they're thinking at least so well that makes sense for america in a lot of ways america is a very intense country well yeah ricky gervais said this on like a one of some random tonight show it might have been the tonight show might have been cbs i don't remember yeah but he was like he was basically just like yeah there's a reason americans are like crazy and all but also like brave and and just it's all or nothing shit is because we're descended from insane people yeah no we're like like, let's go across this ocean don't know if i'm gonna make it i'm gonna go live in the wilderness and try and like make my life be a fur trapper yeah right you leave society for one that's not even established yet your senses are heightened all the time and then you're descended from other people who are like all right i'm living in this city but fuck that i'm gonna go into the other wilderness yeah like i'm gonna go further west it's right it's Maybe not like the cause of the dopamine. Maybe it's already like it was there anyway. It's something like that. But to that extent, you know, it lowers over time too. So you're in the heat of it right now, though. Like people that right. immigrated here a couple generations later moved west. So, like, this is very intense groups of people that are on edge all the time. Dan, what are you thinking? I see you getting ready. Never mind. I'll let you think on it more. Anyway, let um, it marinate. Yeah, let that marinate. It's marinate. Marinate. Yeah, yeah, let it marinate. Marinate is what you marinate in. Okay. Anyway, uh, yeah, so Peacock requested help from the federal government. Peacock's political allies arranged for a $1,000 reward to be posted for Bob Lee, dead or alive. However, Lee had friends and family who helped him move safely about the countryside, allowing him to fight for another year before the 4th United States Cavalry was sent in to settle the feud. They sent the Cav after him? Yep. So, with the pressure on, Lee decided to run to Mexico, which is the best move anyone can make. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a William Walker move. Go to Mexico. Go to Mexico. Go to Nicaragua. Take Mexico. Take Mexico. Take Nicaragua. Become king. Actually, Mexico's uh, country saying should be, come to Mexico. You could be king, question mark. (laughs) Come and take it? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So, yeah, he decides to run to Mexico, but was shot and killed en route by the military and he died. Lee's what, plan, what year is this? Uh, this would be in 18... It's right after 1868. Okay. So, so not too long after William Walker. No. At all. Yeah. No. Same, same era. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they might have been in Mexico at the same time. Yeah. If they got down there. Could have crossed paths. He was in Baja, yeah. though. They might have shot at him. That's true. He was in Baja. Um, so Lee's plan was actually betrayed by a former supporter, Henry Boren, who met his maker the next day at the hands of his own nephew who saw his uncle as a traitor. Uh, Even though Lee was dead, the battle wasn't over. His men scattered, but they continued to come back into the area for years to take pot shots at Peacock and his men. In fact, it was June 1871 before Lee's sympathizers killed Peacock, finally ending the feud once and for all. It wasn't until Lewis Peacock was killed that it was over. So they just, at some point, they were just like, we got to murder this motherfucker. This is all because bad narrative. Like trying to trying to create a narrative to support a larger narrative, right? It's like yeah. this is a war criminal. Yeah. Don't do that. Yeah. Don't do it. Just call him what he is. Which is what 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 was he even? He's a Confederate. Yeah. Who like some people were like, help us like be on our side of the politics. Yeah. Which and he probably shouldn't have gotten involved in either, to be honest. But well. it's his hometown. He sees someone bullying people around, maybe for the right reasons. So they robbed him. But they robbed right. him. Right. Two wrongs you started don't make it. a right. Yeah. yeah. Right. No, Lewis Peacock probably deserved to die. He fucking... And that's the thing, too. Bob Lee... I, I'm not going to get into right side of history stuff. Obviously, there's a right side there and a wrong one. Bob Lee and his brother... He had his brother chaperone him to turn himself in. Then they took him to the woods and robbed him. That's how you start a feud. Yeah. 
that's taking the justice into your own hands. And they got open sued. up a door. They got countersued. That, yeah. You can have the right idea. Like if I'm like like if I'm like pro I, I don't even fucking know. If I'm just like generally like I'm I'm pro women's rights and then but like I, I just start like murdering guys who are dicks to women or something. Like that's not doesn't make like I like one guy or like if I if I am like pro women's rights, but then I went and You're like, just going and killing everybody on the uh red pill Reddit page. Yeah. Or yeah. just like you see not a, helping a, anything. Yeah, you see a guy arguing with his girlfriend and you don't even know like maybe the situation, right. you go beat him up. And there lies the he was totally in the right too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but the the problem is like if someone saw that video, they'd be like, you know what? That guy deserved it. And then no that context. Opens, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. Once you take that shit out of the box, you can't put it back in. Yeah. It's it cannot go back in. That's how so, Blood starts. Actually, here's what I'm gonna say: the Peacocks were not on the right side of history. Not. I it, don't give a shit what they supported. Yeah, on a local level, certainly not. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, not for local government. Um, and I just want to cl- uh, say something too. If you like Blood Feud stuff, I kind of got the idea for this from a movie I've watched like five times now called Blue Ruin. It's fantastic. You should check it out. It's a modern Blood Feud movie. It's really good. Okay. Last feud we're going to talk about. I love it. You know which one we're going to talk about. The big about. one. The big one. The real McCoy. The Costner. Yeah. The Hatfields and the McCoys. The one that needs no name. It's just the two family names. Yeah. So, while the most famous family feud between the McCoys of Kentucky and the Hatfields of West Virginia uh, dates back to 1865, the feud's most deadly era actually began on Election Day, once again, in 1862. Three McCoy men killed Ellison Hatfield, stabbing him 25 times before finishing him off with a bullet to the chest. You have to be... Sorry, 26 <sighs> times. I misread that. So bad. There's no way I would rather die less than stabbing. It's very personal. I don't it's know. How per- many times was Paul Pierce stabbed? It was like, I don't know. It was a lot of times. I don't, I don't he know. He survived yeah. it. He survived it. So but I'm saying it murdered in particular. Stabby, stabby. Because unless it is, again, like someone who knows what they're doing, you're just going to get stabbed a shit ton yeah. until they find it. Right. Or until they're like, well, I think that'll be enough blood. Yeah. He's going to lose enough that yeah. way. I was He's like, real leaky. Just slit my throat. Yeah. Seriously. Good Lord. Like, you ever see prison shankings in movies? It's like, it's like, what the fuck? Just get him. And as much as I would like to be able to pull off a Rorschach and be like, you're in here with me. Yeah. No, I'm not going to be able to do that. You're yeah, in there but with at least them. Yeah, yeah. I'm in there. <laughs> you're in there with them. There's at least a silver lining, right? Of be getting stabbed that many times. No, like they're going to hurt their hand a little bit. They're going to get. What if it slips? They get a little cut on they're their gonna hand. They're going to at least Ooh, mess gross. up. Their oh, hand, that's yeah. actually a, a very normal thing that people who murder their people with knives like they they have cuts on their hands. And yeah, there's you a, fuck up your hand. There's a cop who I read this about OJ once. He was like, I didn't want to believe it. Like I was friends with OJ. And then I saw him at a barbecue like a couple days later and he had band-aids on his hands. And he was like, I've, and then I knew because I'm a fucking cop. I fucking knew right then. And I, I never talked to him again because he was like, there's no other earthly reason that OJ would have a bunch of little band-aids on his hands. Right. right after- exactly. Anyway, um, so they killed him 726 times, yada. Uh, the next day, the three young men were escorted to Pikeville, Kentucky for arraignment. The Hatfield clan intercepted them tied them up and shot them in cold blood this is the start of the feud once again it's vigilante justice yeah i mean you can't really say that you were on the side of justice if it's such like a micro level if you're like killing people execution style Right, exactly. It's, well, it's you're one, beating the law right. to the punch. It's one thing if it's like a like a couple random American soldiers like popping off Nazis in World War II Europe, because that's a ma- massive macro thing and a micro thing happens. But when the conflict is micro, you really can't. They really you know. can't cheat the hangman. Uh, so yeah, twenty arrest warrants were issued for the Hatfields that did the revenge, uh, but no law enforcement bothered to serve them because. No one's getting in on that. Who wants that? Nope. Nobody wants Nobody that wants smoke now. Oddly, the McCoys didn't seek immediate revenge, as it was understood that in terms of social justice, the three boys got what they deserved because they fucking killed them before the law could do anything about it. Uh, so, so at least someone was being rational for a yeah. minute. Still, animosity ran high, and minor skirmishes occurred in the ensuing years, showing that the feud was quiet but not dead. However, when business investors balked at putting money into a community 
community that had a reputation for vendetta violence, the government decided it was time to step in. The state of Kentucky began serving the 20 outstanding Hatfield warrants, arresting two men within a matter of weeks. In order to stop the arrest, a small faction of the Hatfields decided to kill the head of the opposing family, old Rannell, I guess it's Rannell McCoy, R-A-N-E-L, Rannell, Rannell. Yeah, I, we you know we like talk a lot of shit these days about like oh my god we named our kids like Braden or something yeah Rainel sounds bad yeah, I hope it's Rannell. either way yeah um, either way so that he couldn't testify in court against the Hatfields so early on the morning of January first eighteen eighty eight nine members of the Hatfield set fire to Rannell McCoy's cabin as he and his family fled the flames shots rang out killing two adult McCoy children. When Mrs. McCoy ran out to check them, she was severely beaten. So there was no, hey, it's a lady. Stop. Let's let her bury her kids. <laughs> and the Hatfield McCoy thing, they're like, no. fuck it. Get her. Yeah. Like, yeah. So, uh, yeah, she was severely beaten, but she survived. The Hatfield's target, Raynal, escaped harm entirely by hiding in a pig pen. The attack was condemned by most members of the Hatfield clan, and although there were two more deaths and the occasional scruffles for years to come, the majority of the feud fighters had decided that enough was enough. But in all, around a dozen people died during the feud. However, the two families, this is the fun part of the feud. This is the one that has a happy ending. The two families eventually put aside their differences, and they now see their shared family history with a sense of humor, which is hilarious. Like... <laughs> remember that time right we rounded up three years shot him in cold blood yeah. on the stagecoach trail oh man i've ever wished <laughs> roscoe just put some cold hard steel in your your boy's <laughs> mouth and pulled the trigger and a little bit of his spine shot out the back of his neck oh, oh boy remember oh. when your grandmama was running from the yeah. f- fleeing the flaming cabin and we beat her half to death oh <laughs> hebediah <laughs> and jibediah just kept back at that lady's <laughs> mouth oh, she, all her teeth were flying she out was, like popcorn it was crazy oh she <laughs> aged 10 years in that one moment right there <laughs> to put a few more wrinkles on her i tell you what oh my goodness she was pretty old and our uh, boys just beat her to death almost <laughs> What's even funnier is I can't imagine what those conversations were like because uh, in 1979, both families made a week-long appearance on the nightly game show Family Feud. There was a hat <laughs> deal in McCoy's the only way tie. it could end. That's <laughs> yeah. the perfect bow on what? top. Good Lord. Imagine having so yes, like... So, Americans are insane. It, Americans are it, insane. <laughs> that is fucking nuts. Yeah. It's like just like three generations from now having like... I don't know. Whatever is left of, let's just stay with the OJ thing. The Goldman clan playing or the family bin, feud. The Bin like Ladens versus the Bushes? I don't know. <laughs> like, uh, uh, Bin Saman versus, like, fucking Jews. I don't know. That would be. Right. It's like yeah. a, like a, a Goebbels cousin versus. <laughs> it's like the Hitler's Ellie Weisel's, versus, yeah. like, fucking grandkids or something. It's the Hitler's versus the Goldman. I would honestly, like, have. Would be serene. But then if I got asked to be on that and then was on that, I would be filled with an almost cosmic rage that I didn't know existed in me and wanted. Like, about, like, about, like, like, for me in particular, like, I have a little. I have some Irish blood me. So, like, if I. Whatever reason, they're like, oh, we actually found out like you're this Irish family that was slaughtered, and uh, we're gonna have the Cromwell family yeah. on, yeah, uh, which is like the British guy that murdered a bunch of fucking Irish people back in the day, uh, English Civil War era, and uh, like honestly, like that doesn't bother me at all right now. But if I had to be on Family Feud across from them, and they were just like, Haha, we're the ones that murdered, like at some point, I would want to run across the aisle. And just hit them with a chair. Hey, you want to know something even funnier about this episode of Family Feud? I even get to the good part. Okay, perfect. <laughs> um, both sides were given pistols to take shots at each other with blanks. <laughs> you can kill someone with a blank. I know. It's 1979. Yeah. What the fuck is happening? I would have been like, you guys mm-hmm. shoot first. And yeah. then they all <laughs> shoot first. And then we just run up as close just, as possible. Would you just, one of them just pistol there's whips been another no, one? Several. No, no. You there's could there's put been a blank several to blow someone's well, fucking skull. Yeah, yeah but there's I mean, also been several actors who have actually been shot on a set. Was it uh, S- Spike Gently? Which one died of a blank? Which Bruce, one died in the crow? Certainly not Spike. Not Spike Lee. Brandon Lee. Didn't Brandon, Brandon Lee die from a blank? Yeah. Thanks, Joel. I Not a blank. It. it was a real gun. Oh, shit. They uh, replaced a the Superman fake gun with a real gun. In the 50s, they put a real bullet in on accident as well. Damn. Wasn't that super? Is that what happened to Christopher Reeves? Uh, uh, no, what they happened was they I put a real horse, horse under him. He fell off a horse, yeah. 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 
Well, uh, the McCoys won three games to five. Three games out of five. Oh, for the the family feud. Yeah. So it was decided once and for all. Yeah. And now they have. I think actually, I don't have this in the notes, but I think like starting in like 2000 or 2001, they started doing um, joint family reunions, and they have like a little festival now on like joint family. They reunions. monetized it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, at that point, it was so long. Yeah, gone, they were like, "Fuck it, whatever. We're famous for this now." Um, but those are some famous American uh, blood feuds. What'd you guys think about that? You know, Wild West was cray cray. Some of them were in Kentucky and West Virginia, but you know that's another thing too. I think a lot of the the Kentucky West Virginia thing was like state line kind of stuff. Isn't Kentucky West Virginia don't they border? They border, I believe. Yeah, yeah. so there was some tensions there. From wait, didn't you say Kentucky never joined the Confederacy? Border mm-hmm. state, stay in the Union. A lot of people forget that because they they SEC. Yeah, no, that's true. Because like I always, I'm always flabbergasted when I remember when I hear that, and then I hear West Virginia wasn't. And it's like West Virginia. Very specifically, was not in the Confederacy. People, yeah, well, what, with West Virginia, yeah, very specifically, was like, get me the fuck out of the Confederacy. Yeah, that's why West Virginia exists, literally. Right? Yeah, yeah. So I always thought that was interesting. But what'd you, what'd you guys learn, Daniel, Robert? Would you like me to go first? Go ahead. Sure. Uh, I learned mostly that um, it's probably good we have the law. Sounds to be good. Seems pretty good. More for often ho- than not. Yeah. yeah. For however, uh, whatever your uh, complaints about the justice system are, uh, and I'm not saying those are invalid, uh, but uh, boy, all you got to do is look at, um, I guess what I would classify as any story from the 19th century. <laughs> yeah. Kind of needs due process. <laughs> like you need due any process. Any story I think at I th- all. I think the most important thing here is due process. It's yes. really important. Due process. Whatever else you think of the, the constraints or whatever, due process mm. and innocence until guilt is proven. No. Which I is mean, essentially a subset of due process. Yes. It sounds like they were getting all their dopamine that they ever needed. They didn't, they I didn't think they already Instagram. had too many. They didn't have... They didn't have any social media. Well, now that it's faded mm-hmm. out, all the dopamine's run out. That's why we need that. I think what they did wasn't very dope and was very mean. Wow. That's some sage wisdom, yeah. Rob. You're going to tell your kid that? Yes. <laughs> also, real quick, I want to get into something uh, that just I don't. I'm, we're never going to talk about anywhere else since we talked about a guy named Bob Lee who is a Confederate. I was thinking about this the other day. Robert E. Lee has like a famous quote that I think is maybe one of the dumbest quotes I've ever heard in my life. Good. Uh it was uh, something, I'm going to paraphrase just slightly here, something along, lo- something along the lines of, uh, it's good war is so terrible, lest we grow too fond of it. Which doesn't make any goddamn sense, because if it wasn't terrible, then it wouldn't matter if you grew fond of it. <laughs> And that's his, that is Robert E. Lee's like most famous quote, that's, and people were like, "What a wise man!" Well, he was a <laughs> gen- what? He was a Southern gentleman. What? Getting shot in the leg? Yeah, is terrible. Good yeah. thing, or else we'd like getting shot in the leg. It's good candy has so much sugar, lest we eat too much of him. <laughs> like, what the fuck are you talking about? You just don't understand. Didn't have much sugar. You just don't understand the Southern disposition, Robert. It's the dumbest <laughs> famous quote. I bet he said it with like just the oh most god and I syrupy just, accent. Well, yeah, but you have that. Yeah, oh no, I went over you like, like syrup. That's what that's what a shell shocked person says. Yeah. <laughs> like just fucking like like that's just like circular logic. I'm yeah. glad the shells are so loud, or otherwise <laughs> I wouldn't be so afraid of them. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. No, I, actually, you hit that quote almost perfect. It is well that war is so terrible, or we should grow too fond mm-hmm. of it. Like, if it wasn't <laughs> terrible, it wouldn't matter how fond we grew of it. If it was just like, wait, do you think if it was just a little less terrible, we might be really into what? it? What? <laughs> what a moron. Did that you learn anything? That is the dumbest fucking quote. No, I learned what Rob just told us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm glad that's what you took away from it. Last thing said, that's what Dan learned. No, no, no. Um, I, I'm kind of down with bringing back family feuds. Blood feuds? Yeah, just in general. I mean, my family's in a blood I, feud. I, take the opposite position that you guys were on um vigilantism actually kind of dope yeah a lot of people don't know this but defund the police just means yes vigilantes it kind of does not defund uh, eliminate 
the police, really. Well, abolish the police. Abolish the, that's certainly what abolish means. the police means vigilante. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think is going to happen? That's, you think it's going to get better? I'm going to edit myself. I don't mean defund the police. I mean abolish the police. I'm, I'm against both at this point. But, but yeah. One, the, the most extreme one, what do you think happens? Right. What you, do you get think? neighborhood cartels. <laughs> like <laughs> Little gangs. It's essentially like... Think about just what you're saying to yourself. Like, nothing bad can fill this void. <laughs> right. It's like, you know, when we leave places, we take over and yeah. they get yeah. swarmed with bad people. Yeah. yeah. It's fine. Yeah. It's no, all good. Nothing bad ever filled a void before. No, not especially not in a power vacuum. And it's what, the, here's the thing with the that I'll just say real quick and RER our vigilantes, vigilantes and stuff and stuff like that. Fine if you want to reform it, but don't rip it all away first right like make the, the best way to fix a building isn't to knock out the cornerstone and watch it crumble <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah right no you know, new building yeah, well, yeah no yeah. You, got, you, you know dynamite yeah okay yeah it's all dynamite yeah. just toss dynamite at it right anyway this has been our uh anti-blm episode <laughs> apparently i guess <laughs> <laughs> somehow great That's yeah all, that... it was all just white people murdering each other uh, all actually mostly you know what the thing i learned Hill people. Bad. The, the worst. <laughs> Remember what Dan's... Uh, My name stands for. His, his, his directional... His cardinal direction. So, yeah, I, I didn't really have an opinion on this beforehand, but now, like, it's starting to creep into my brain right now, and I'm like, inherently, I just support these people. I like to yeah. think that most thoughts just kind of creep in there for yeah. you. Like but you also, you're like, what, at the base of the, the hill? process. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, people, yeah, at the base of the hill. Yes, shit, that's what my name is. Hill adjacent shit, is, hill adjacent is <laughs> my name. Or shit tree. rolls downhill mm -hmm. and settles at the bottom. But hey, guys, thanks so much for listening. Please like and subscribe. Leave reviews for us. We really need them. Five stars. Tell us um, stuff. Tell us things. And thank you so much for everything done for us already because, as you know, this is our first sponsored episode. You've already episode. heard the goddamn ad. Yeah. This is our first sponsored episode. You we are in. making money off this goddamn show now After because of you. After 47 episodes for free, we finally got you fuckers. Yeah. yeah so keep yeah. tuning in. We are really eternally grateful, though. Yeah. For that. Shout out to Policy Genius. Thanks for the ad sponsorship. We really appreciate it. It helps us keep going. Thanks for the growing. money. Yeah, it helps us keep growing and keep reaching more people. And also, great policies. Great. Great the stuff. Best. Yeah. I need my life insurance. Also, if you want Softcore History merch, go to softcorehistory.com. Going to have a new shirt drop in this week. Oh, Stay tuned. Nice. I still need my hat, you bitch. New hat. Oh, too. yeah. I got to figure that out. We're going to just have a new logo that you're going to be able to get infinite merch on. Well, it's not a Softcore logo. It's just a tight logo. It's a cool Topsy the Elephant logo. Yeah. It's not really a logo, is it? It's just a Topsy shirt. It's a Topsy shirt. We're topsy making a Topsy hat. shirt. Yeah. yeah, Topsy shirt, hat. We'll see if it works on the hat. That might we'll be a little... Yeah, maybe a mug. Maybe a mug. Either way, it's a sick design. Be on the lookout for it. We'll uh, post about it when it's live. And I'm Jake Goldman for Dan Register, Rob Fox, and Joel on the switchboard. You just got soft-served. <laughs>